foot. Yes, she did. And on that note, we are going to a news break because I can't top that. So we will be back in five minutes. Maybe there's a little good news here tonight. This message comes from NPR sponsor, American Express. See a big deal as no big deal with worry-free protection. See business differently with American Express. Don't do business without it. Learn more at AmericanExpress.com slash differently. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Janine Herbst. Some Central American migrants tried to breach the border crossing at Tijuana today, hoping to pressure U.S. officials to hear their asylum claims. U.S. Customs and Border Patrol agents shot tear gas at some of the migrants and closed the San Ysidro border crossing. This is some 5,000 migrants are gathered on the Tijuana side of the border, waiting to apply for asylum in the U.S. Meanwhile, in San Diego... rally in support of the migrants was held today. Kim Guerra was one of them. It could be me, it could have been my sister, it could have been my mom um, marching. My mom did come across the border. My mom did walk over the mountains um, to come here to give me a better life and it was a lot of times life or death for them. Extra personnel was also deployed to the area. Officials in California say the devastating campfire is now 100 percent contained, but cleanup and recovery efforts continue. NPR's Brian Mann has more. Jennifer Erickson with the U.S. Forest Service says the rain helped a lot, but more than a thousand firefighters are still working to put out remaining hot spots. We called the campfire 100 percent contained. Contained just means that there is line around this fire and there's little threat of it escaping those lines. Hundreds of people are still unaccounted for here and efforts to recover human remains are intensifying. There are also thousands of people like Jeremy Barker still living in shelters, unable to go home. The shelter is great, but I just I want to have a home. You know, I'm staying in a barracks with 100 other people. A handful of neighborhoods have been reopened, but most mandatory evacuations remain in effect. Brian Mann, NPR News, Paradise, California. The family of a Birmingham man killed by police in a suburban mall on Thanksgiving night today called for the release of a video they say will show the truth of how Amantic Bradford Jr. died. Cheryl Wheeler-Stewart of member station WBHM has more. Amantic Bradford's family says they don't trust the police account of his death. An off-duty officer working security shot Bradford following an altercation in the mall that left one man and a 12-year-old wounded. Police thought Bradford was the shooter. Florida civil rights attorney Ben Crump is representing Bradford's family. He says the family is suspicious. You know what would alleviate that suspicion? Transparency. Don't say no more, just release the video. Crump says the police rushed to judgment, labeled Bradford a killer, and praised the officer who shot him before they knew the details. The unnamed officer is currently on administrative leave, pending a separate investigation. For NPR News, I'm Cheryl Wheeler-Stewart in Birmingham. In Iran, a magnitude 6.3 earthquake hit the western part of the country near its border with Iraq. More than 170 people were injured, houses and roads were damaged. You're listening to NPR News from Washington. A key U.S. government advisory group is coming down hard on Saudi Arabia for its use of textbooks with inflammatory messages. And here's Tom Jolton says the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom is due to report that Saudi leaders are, quote, backsliding in their commitment to stop using textbooks that promote hatred and intolerance. A report this week by the Commission on International Religious Freedom will say the Saudi government is passing out textbooks that teach hatred and intolerance toward religious minorities. The commission will say textbooks produced both for domestic and international use promote violence against apostates and homosexuals and condone the continued oppression of women. The Anti-Defamation League made a similar argument in a report of its own recently. An ADL analysis of Saudi state textbooks in the Arabic language found passages that incite violence against Jews, Christians, Shiite Muslims, women, homosexual men, and anybody who mocks or condemns converts away from Islam. Tom Jelton, NPR News. After a six-month voyage through space, NASA's robotic lander called InSight is expected to touch down on Mars tomorrow. 
The $830 million Insight Lander is designed to study the deep interior of the distant world. It will gather information for the next two years. Now, a few weeks after it lands, a robotic arm will deploy instruments to measure Mars quakes and meteor strikes and heat sensors that scientists will hope to unlock mysteries about Mars and whether it once harbored life. I'm Janine Herbst, NPR News. Welcome back to WBHM Digital Broadcasting. We are out of Birmingham, Alabama, and thank you so much for joining us here on Fate Mag Radio. I am so fortunate to be able to host this show because you know what? Great, great stories come out of this. The history is astounding. Fate Magazine's been in publication since 1948, for crying out loud, and it's still going strong. We've got a new edition about to come out, and... We have Fate Radio, so there you go. Two media, fantastic subjects and guests. So thank you for being part of that. And here I am with Denise Pridemore, who is the host of Paranormal Pride here on WBHM Digital Broadcasting. She is also, with her husband Ron, Pridemore Paranormal. And I just enjoy them very much. So Denise, welcome back. I'm so glad to have you here. Well, I'm still glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing. You haven't run screaming from the building, so I'm going to take it as a plus. Well, I'm not going to run screaming from the building. I've got guests booked for the next two months, so I, you, <laughs> you're at least stuck with me that long. So Yeah, I don't think that's a problem. No, it, this is, I have to say, people, you, you know, doing a, a talk show, whether it's paranormal or not, it's a lot of work. Yes. It's. There's a lot of things in the back that you don't even know about. There's research, there's finding guests and juggling when they're going to come on and all the other stuff. And luckily, Kat and I, um, we've worked this out so we don't, so we're not booking the same guests, so that you guys are getting some of the best entertainment and unique individuals every week. Some so, more unique than others. Yeah. But, <laughs> In you know, a good way. When we were on other networks, there were no there was no coordination. True. You could have the same guest on three different nights and because nobody talked to each other. Or sometimes even if they did. Yeah, they would go out and book the same guest for this for the night the same week. Yes. Which did happen often. Um, because they, oh, I didn't know that they would, that they would talk to you and they would get them on. So, um, but you know, Kat and I have come up with a way to, to deal with that. So going forward, you know, she adds more, more people, you know, more shows in. We've got a way to deal with that, to make sure that you guys are getting the best programming out there. Yes. How, how can you beat that? So, well, and it is perfect because I don't know if, Everyone knows I'm, I've been like homebound and basically bedbound for a month and a half with, or a month with a broken knee. And there are drugs involved in the treatment of that. And I had my December 5th, my December 12th guest, um, last week, which he was perfect. He stepped right up. He was brilliant. And my guest for last week is now my December 12th guest. So things happen, and it is just so astounding because people support this this industry field, whatever you want to call it. Because if you're coming from the location owners and the convention owners, then it's an industry. But most of the the location owners are part of the research field. I have come across four people now. One of them is our Friday night host, Shelley Burke Robinson, who does Ghost Talk Radio with 187BI, who is the owner of a paranormal research center. And there are four that I am aware of in the country who are going by that description in their title. And I think that's brilliant. That's what these locations need to be. They don't need to be something exploited for money. They don't need to be something where the spirits are trapped. I, The very first time I ever investigated the Old South Pittsburgh Hospital many, many moons ago, 
If you tried to cross a spirit, you were banned. Not coming back, never doing anything else, no matter what the EVP said that you had documentation on. And they had the whole place wired for sound with video so that they would know if someone tried to do that. They thought. Fast forward to today, it's now owned by Ronnie Dees, who is bringing it back to its original glory, including paint colors, wallpapers, flooring, everything. And it's going to be a genuine paranormal research center. It, are they going to make sure that the fungus is gone? The fungus is gone. Okay, because so that was the thing that I it's heard. It's been mitigated. Yeah, because I heard so. that that was awful. I mean... That it was off the walls of about three to four feet. It and... was it was a horrific environment for someone who had lung issues. You would not have been yeah. able to go in there. I should yeah, not, not have now. been in there, but I did not go in the basement. But it was still in other areas. But anyway, you know, the old Paulding Jail, which is owned by Shelley, is a fantastic site. I've had the most extreme paranormal experiences of my life in there. Old South Pittsburgh is pretty close to a second runner on that. But um, at any rate... And I heard that also had some some mold issues as well. Which one? Old South. Well, that's what I was talking about the first time, Old South Pittsburgh. Okay, that's what I thought. Yes, it is, and it did, and it doesn't. It's fascinating. In fact, I'm having Ronnie on to discuss that and how they've been making the changes. But at any rate... You know, we we have all these people who are out there doing different kinds of paranormal things, and they all want to let you know about it. Yeah. Because it matters. And we're fortunate that we get to host these people and bring them in and share them with you. Right. One of my guests that I'm going to have tomorrow night, David Glidden, he's one that's that's out there that's doing true paranormal research on all things paranormal. And one of the things that we'll be talking about tomorrow night is the spook light phenomenon, which is very prevalent in uh, the Joplin, Missouri area. So that's how he got, he found out about it originally. So we'll be talking more about that tomorrow night. And he's also got this thing called paranormal studies where he's done some experiments and other things trying, you know, I'll let him talk about that more. Um, But this will be David's fourth time on paranormal pride. Because, you know, every time he has something new that's coming out, he knows I'm going to be right there to support him. Um, that's the one thing that that I try to do as far as the, the people that I, I support. I try to support everybody. You know, we can't support every single person in the paranormal. But I support the people that I'm close to. And I'm very close to David. And... He's like one of my kids, just like Rick. And, you know, so I know that sounds bad. (laughs) (laughs) That some people get preferential treatment. Um, But if they go out of their way to help you, I mean, we both know sometimes there are those moments where someone is sick. And you have got a cancellation and you really hate to do that because our listeners count on us being here. And there are those go-to people. There are. And And they never let you down. And And that's what is, you know, one of the things about, you know, about David is my guest couldn't be on tonight because, or tomorrow night because something's happened and I had to find somebody to, to fill in and, I know that he's promoting his new movie, Into the Light 2, which is his second Spook Light uh, movie. So I wanted to make sure that it was getting the attention that it needs because he's worked really hard on that. And I, I and he was also promoting promoting it at Ashmore. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there's, there's a lot of things going on there that people need to know about. And David's got a big heart. And... And he, the bad part is, is cat. I'm going to warn you now. I might lose control tomorrow too of the show. It just happens. <laughs> well, I promise I will not take medication prior to your show. 
<laughs> I promise. Well, I will write that down. Well, but the not that but that I would ever happen. It won't ever be as comical as me keeping on talking and Rick thinking that there's something else going on and everybody else just going with it and Rick's still going there. No, 